Hey guys, welcome to another class with me, Sean Helene, and today I've got more shoulder work for you. I know we've been doing a lot of shoulder work recently, but um, as of this recording, I have a four-month-old son, and for those of you who are parents, you know how that can ruin your upper back quite easily. So this will be a little bit of a building upon the last couple of videos, um, but don't worry if you haven't done those, you'll get caught up really quickly and we've got some new, fun and exciting work to do as well. So all you'll need is a little bit of wall space to begin with and then also a strap. But other than that, I don't think we'll need any other props. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so you're gonna start against the wall and we're going to begin with a couple of my favorite shoulder uh, uh, exercises that are simple, but they're very effective. So I'm going to mirror you to start to make it hopefully a little easier to follow. I want you to stand with your left hip against the wall. Take your left arm out about 90 degrees and just put your palm flat against the wall. Then if you look at your palm right now, your middle finger is probably pointing straight up. I want you to now turn your palm back 45 degrees so your middle finger is pointing straight back. Then, keeping your palm right where it is, step forward about a foot or so. Try not to step in so that you're close to the wall. Just step forward, your hips, your sideways will be a fair amount away from the wall. And you'll begin to feel a really nice stretch across the front of your shoulder. Your pec minor is probably what you're feeling mostly. So now a couple of actions to focus on. First, I want you to take your upper arm bone, roll it back, then Take your shoulder blade on your back, pull it down slightly. Then the hardest part of all three of these actions that we'll focus on today is now I want you to push the shoulder blade up into your chest so that your chest kind of lifts up towards your chin. Now careful that when you pull your chest up towards your chin, the arm bone doesn't roll forward again. Oh, and breathe. And then step back, release the left arm. You might want to give it a little shake, totally up to you. And then we'll go to the other side, take your right arm out. I have this nice setup where all I have to do is just kind of, oh, I'm going to step over here. Put your right palm against the wall, turn the arm back so your middle finger is pointing straight back. Step forward a bit so the arm moves behind you and you start to feel the front of your chest open up. Okay, breathe. Then same three actions. Take your upper arm bone, roll it back. Then take your shoulder blade, draw it down. Try not to throw your hips or your ribs around while doing this too much. Very hard to do, isolating this movement. Then push the tip of your shoulder blade up. So the right side of your chest kind of pulls up towards your chin like you were doing a really deep camel pose, right? Those of you familiar with camels, there's that deep extension pulling up of the upper back and the chest. Ah, oh, so nice. And then step back and release. Let's do two more things against the wall before we move on to our mats. So going back onto the left side, take your left arm off to the left, start the same way as before, turn the palm back so your middle finger is pointing back, step forward, then this time look back at your hand for a second and now I want you to turn the palm so just the pinky finger side of the palm is against the wall, your palm is facing up like you were holding a tray. All right. Then bend your left elbow a little bit so the tip of the elbow kind of bends down towards the floor. We're going to add some minor refinements here which make this amazing. So now take your upper left arm bone just like we did before, roll the upper left arm bone back. Now I want you to swing the inner part of your elbow, that's the part of the elbow closest to the wall, swing it in towards the wall a little bit and as you swing the elbow in I want you to see if you can connect that with the shoulder blade tip pushing up into the chest. So the upper arm rolls back, elbow swings in, and then shoulder blade tip lifts up. You can even push the pinky finger side of the wrist into the wall a little bit to find this, ooh, to find it. And then slowly release. Give your arm a little shake if you like. And then one more time on this side. Take your right arm up to the right, turn the palm back, step forward a bit, look back at your arm, come onto the pinky finger side of the wrist, and again, make sure that you're not smushed. A lot of people when they do, there's a lot of different types of shoulder stretches like this, they like to smush themselves against the wall. Make sure you're stepping a fair amount away from the wall, 
elbow bends down. Now, before you worry about the swing of the elbow, take your upper arm bone, roll it back. Then you're not just moving the elbow, you're trying to connect the elbow with the movement of the shoulder blade tip up. So exhale, swing the elbow and swing the shoulder blade into the chest. Pull your chest up, breathe. Oh, the movements are small, but very intense with this type of work. And go ahead and release. All right, now we're gonna do, this is pretty silly, but it's one of my favorite ways of warming up the spine. So I'm gonna stand about two feet away from the wall. You might wanna watch first. I bend my knees a little bit. I call this gecko. Take the hands out. And then like you're a gecko, you, whoosh, and you go to the side. <laughs> so you don't have to do that part. I just do it for fun. So with your knees bent, you kind of take your arms and then turn the wrists so that your middle fingers are pointing towards each other. Then, like you were trying to pry the wall open, pull the top wrist up and the bottom wrist down, widen the elbows apart, and turn your chest up to the sky. Breathe. Inhale, slowly come out. Ah, oh, and then go to the other side. Again, feet separated. You're about a foot or two away from the wall. Bend your knees and get up. <laughs> All right, middle fingers pointing towards each other. Widen the elbows apart. Pull the palms apart, try to turn the chest up. Breathe. Don't worry about straightening your legs here. Oh, just enjoy the lovely opening across the side waist and the heat that's building in your legs. And come on out nice and slow. I love that one so much. I know he said I'd move to the mat after that, but let's do that one more time and then just kind of add on a little bit. So going back to the other side, feet separated. On your exhale, you're a gecko. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, middle fingers point up or point towards each other. Widen the elbows apart. Turn, roll your chest up. Now feel free to stay here. Otherwise, take a nice deep breath in, and then as you exhale, keep widening the elbows apart. But maybe begin to straighten your legs a little bit. And if you straighten your legs, you can even push your palms into the wall and move your hips away from the wall. Now, when you come out, re-bend your knees. Inhale, release slowly. Ooh. And go to the other side. I keep saying other side because I realize I haven't specified which side you're doing, but it's not too difficult to kind of figure out, do the other side of this one. All right, feet hips distance. On your exhale. Elbows widen apart, middle fingers point towards each other. Don't straighten your legs right away. First, turn your chest up, breathe. Then, maybe exhale, begin to stretch your legs straight. Keep the elbows widening apart, and then begin to press into the wall. If you've got the space, move your hips away from the wall. Oh, fire up your quads. Enjoy. Now, re-bend your knees first. Inhale, come out second. All right, I think that's a pretty good warm up. Now we can make our way back onto our mats and come down onto all fours, hands and knees. Once you're on all fours, we're gonna take a couple rounds of cat-cow. Inhale, look up, lift your sit bones. Exhale, round in, cat stretch. A few more. Inhale, cow. Oh, exhale, cat. Inhale, one more round. Look up, press strongly down into your bum. Exhale, round in, dome your middle back powerfully. Inhale, come back to a neutral spine, walk your hands forward, curl your toes under and stretch back, downward facing dog pose. All right, take your feet about hips, uh, about as wide as your mat to start. Make sure there's an even spread of your fingers and an even spread of your palms. Bring a nice bend to your knees. And then with your knees bent, press your hips up and back. Press your chest back, but keep the undersides of your arms pulling up towards the sky. Then keeping the reach of the hips and the lift of the arms, maybe stretch your legs a little straighter. Oh, so good. Take your feet back to about hips distance, then stretch your right leg up as you inhale. 
Exhale, please step your right foot forward between your hands. Lower your left knee to the ground, and then move your left fingertips off to the left till they come just off of your mat, and twist your right arm up to the sky as you exhale. Just a brief hold here. Inhale, release your right hand back down. Lift your back knee. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, now please stretch your left leg up into the sky. <laughs> I don't know what that was. And then as you exhale, please bring your left foot forward between your hands. Lower your right knee to the ground. Again, move your right hand over to the right. This just enables you as you exhale and twist to open up your upper back a little more easily. Inhale, please release your left hand back down and step back down, we're facing dog pose. Inhale, come forward to a plank, pause on your plank, hold it, pull your hips up, pull your thighs up, press down strongly through your palms, and then exhale back, downward facing dog pose. Inhale, stretch your right leg up into the sky again. Now this time, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Oops, I kicked the sharp edge of the corner of the desk, very, very lovely experience. Right foot outside of your right hand. Turn your right toes out ever so slightly. Come up onto your left fist and then twist your right arm up to the sky. With each exhale, press your bottom fist down and rotate your middle waist. Breathe. Inhale, release your right hand back down inside of your right foot and step back, downward facing dog pose. Let's do the second side. Inhale, take your left leg up. Exhale without kicking a sharp object. Step your foot outside of your left hand lightly. Let your left toes turn out a bit. Come up onto your right fist on your right hand and exhale. Twist your left arm up to the sky. Again here, you can even cathartically push down through your bottom hand and turn, reach up through your upper waist. Inhale, release your left hand back down, and then step back, downward facing dog pose, Adho Mukha Svalasana. Inhale, come forward to a plank pose. Pause in your plank. This time, shift forward and bend your elbows, lower down to the ground. Pause once you're on the ground. Flip your hands back by your sides, palms to the floor. Press your palms down, lift your head, chest, shoulders up. Roll your upper arm bones back, then lift your legs up, squeeze all four sides of your legs, and then lift your arms up, roll your shoulders back again. Now without letting your upper arms drop down, put your hands down, press your feet down, rise up to a cobra pose. Exhale, lower back down, tuck your toes under, and press back, downward facing dog pose. Inhale from downward dog, bend your knees, gaze forward and then walk or lightly, boop, kaboop, <laughs> to the front of your mat. I meant to say jump, but kaboop came out instead. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, stand up, stretch out. Exhale, hands to your side. All right, a few rounds of sun salute variations. Come to the front of your mat if you are not already. Inhale, take your arms up, hook your thumbs at the top and stretch up. Exhale, fold to the ground, standing forward, fold. Inhale, lengthen your chest forward, push your upper thigh bones back. Exhale, step to a plank pose. Pause in your plank, pull your hips and thighs up, shift forward, lower down slowly. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog, upper arm bones back. Exhale, downward facing dog. From downward dog, stretch your right leg into the sky behind you. Let's do a knee to nose just to wake up the abdominals. So bring your knee forward towards your chest. Pause here, pull your knee up, bring your shoulders more forward, and then connect your nose and your knee. Oh, fuck. My nose and knee don't touch, but you get the idea. Take your right leg all the way up and back. And then exhale, step your right foot forward. Lower your left knee down. Keep your back toes curled under. Inhale your arms up to the sky. Turn your palms forward. Bend your elbows out to the sides and squeeze your shoulder blades on your back. Now we're gonna do something that I call extreme cactus arms. I think I taught a whole class on this earlier on in my videos. 
So first, make sure the shoulders are strongly back into the spine. Now, from here, I want you to push the inner parts of your elbows forward a little bit. And as you push the inner part of your elbow forward, upper arm back, and pull the tip of the shoulder blade up into your chest. It's not this where you're flicking the wrist back. It's not this where you're just pushing your elbows forward. Upper arms back, shoulder blade tips lift, then hips forward as you do that. Inhale your arms up and hook your thumbs, stretch to the sky. Exhale your hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward to a plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ooh, I got a little hop in there. Okay, take your left leg up this time. Exhale, bring your knee to your chest. Pause. Press down strongly to your hand. Bring your knee a little more forward and up. Then inhale, take your left leg back into the sky. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Right knee to the ground. Keeping your back toes curled under. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bend. First regular cactus arms. Elbows out to about 90 degrees. Shoulder blades back. Upper arm bones back. Then the movement is small, but the impact is big. Push the wrists back a little and press the elbows forward and use that as a mechanism to get the tips of your shoulder blades to press up into your chest. Keep that. Sit down through your front thigh. Arms up, thumbs hooked, and reach. Exhale your hands down to the ground. This time, lift your back knee. Step to the front of your sticky mat. Standing forward fold, Uttanasana. Feet stay hips distance. Bend your knees, arms up by your ears. Your, your ears, your ears, not ours, whatever those are. Okay, now stay in chair, put your left hand on your left thigh. Stretch up through your right waist and then exhale, twist. Hook your right elbow outside of your thigh. Fold your palms together, lower your butt down. Inhale here, now exhale, push your bottom elbow down into your thigh. Press your top palm down into your bottom palm and turn, revolve your whole waist and chest upwards. Inhale, back up to chair. Ooh, exhale, stand up, hands by your sides. Why stand up? Oh, because your teacher needs a break. And right to the second side, inhale, bend your knees, arms up. Again, keep your left arm up, right hand to the thigh, stretch up, exhale, twist. Elbow outside the knee, palms together, butt down. Wait for your exhale, make sure your right elbow is pointing up, then push your bottom elbow down, press your top palm down to your bottom palm and twist. Notice my hips are twisting a little bit too, that's fine. In fact, it's ideal. Inhale, back to chair. Exhale, standing forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, place your palms. Step back, plank pose. Inhale and plank. Exhale, lower to the ground. Pause on the floor. Palms back by your sides. Press the palms down. Lift your head, shoulders. Then lift your legs, palms are still down. Squeeze your legs straight. Now lift the arms, roll the shoulders back. Interlace your fingers, come on up locust pose. Without letting your chest or shoulders drop, right up to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, one more round of our sun salutation. Take your right leg up. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Left knee down, back toes stay curled. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, bend, shoulders on your back. Then, inner elbow comes forward, upper arm bone goes back, shoulder blade presses up all at once. Then, keep that, hips forward slightly, arms up, thumbs hook, lift. Now, adding on this time, take a deep breath in. Exhale, lift your back knee. Boom, chest up, side waists up. Exhale, hands down, step back, downward dog. Inhale to a plank pose. Exhale, lower down. 
Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. All right, last one. Take your left leg up, please. Exhale, bring your left foot forward. Right knee to the ground. Keep your back toes curled. Inhale, arms to the sky. One more extreme cactus arms. Last one. Bend. Bend. I'm just getting all sorts of weird voices today. Then swing inner elbow forward. Upper arm bone back. Chest pulls forward and up. Then hips forward. Arms up, thumbs hooked. Take another deep breath in. Then exhale, lift your back knee. Stretch up. Exhale, your hands down. From here, step forward. Standing forward fold. Exhale, bow in. Inhale, stand all the way up. Stretch your arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your sides. Tadasana. All right. Hopefully that warmed you up. It sure as heck for sure sure fired warmed me up. Inhale, your arms up. Hook your thumbs. And then exhale, fall to the ground. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, step back. Go right to downward facing dog, please. All right, from downward dog, inhale, take your left leg into the air. Exhale, step your left foot outside your left hand. Lower your right knee, pad your knee if it doesn't like too much pressure on the ground. Left toes pointed out slightly. Come up onto your right fist again and twist your left arm up. Push your bottom fist down. Lift up, rotate your waist. Exhale, bend your back knee, reach back, hold your foot. If you cannot hold your foot or can barely hold your foot, elevate your bottom hand. That'll enable you to reach back a little more successfully. If your hand and foot are very far away, just don't worry about grabbing your foot yet. Those of you who are able to grab your foot, simply just, well, not simply, but one, one instruction that's relatively simple but not easy, lift and turn your chest up and breathe. Inhale, release, place your palms back down, and then step back, down or down. Second side, take your right leg up. Step your right foot outside your right hand. Right toes turned out slightly, left knee down. Again, come up onto your fist or grab your block or your book or whatever you need to elevate your bottom hand. I have a student who, instead of using a block, uses a, a box of wine. People get very creative doing yoga at home. Then take your right arm back. See if you're able to grab your foot. If you're not, don't worry. No one's going to judge you. No one can see you. If you are holding your foot, lift up, turn, and roll your chest. Breathe. Inhale, release. Place your palms back down and then step back into a downward facing dog. Now, from downward dog, inhale, come to one more plank pose for now. Exhale, lower down to the ground. Once you are on your floor, place your hands right by your chest. Come up onto your fingertips. I'm having to scooch to the side a little bit. I want you to take your fingertips off of your mat and onto the floor on either side of your mat. So move your hands wide, press your feet down, rise up, finger stand cobra. Take your upper arms back, upper arms back. Then let your elbows bend out to the sides initially as you do this. Then swing your inner elbow forward a little bit and push the tips of your shoulder blades up into your chest. Same kind of work. Exhale, slowly lower back to the floor. Hands by your chest, press up and back, down with fixing God pose. All right, let's do just a little bit more leg, hip, and spine before we move onward. Take your right leg into the sky. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Lower your left knee, keeping your back toes curled. Inhale your arms up. Put your right hand onto your right thigh. Do just a little side bend over to your right for a moment so you're really elongating your whole left waist. Then exhale, twist. Hook your elbow outside of your thigh. Stack your palms, widen your elbows apart. And again, exhale, press your bottom elbow down, press your top palm down. Take your top shoulder blade back 
and rotate. Stay here or on your next exhale, lift your back thigh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Then if you lifted your back thigh, lower your back knee down. Inhale your arms up to the sky. Just for a moment, hook your thumbs and lift up. Exhale your hands to the ground. Okay, now keeping your left toes tucked under, which means not this, this. Sit back onto your left heel with your toes tucked under. Now some of you cannot flex your knee and put this much weight on it. It's hard on the knee. You can keep your hips up and forward a little bit. Otherwise, the rest of us are sitting back and down. Two instructions here. Take your hips, pubic bone, buttocks, and reach them back like you're sticking your butt out. Keep that, squeeze your right quads. You'll feel your whole right hamstring go, oh my God. Oh my God. And then inhale, re-bend your right knee, please. Step back, downward facing dog. From downward dog, inhale, extend your left leg into the air. Exhale, sweep your left foot forward. Lower your right knee down to the ground. Inhale, take your arms up. Put your left hand onto your left thigh. Take a moment here and give yourself a nice right side waist stretch. Exhale, fold into your twist. Elbow outside of your thigh, palms together. Not like this, elbows apart. Press your bottom elbow down, press your top palm into your bottom palm. Turn, rotate. Then only if you did it so on the first side, on your exhale, lift your back thigh. I think I might go through a twisting phase next after we get through this shoulder bonanza. All right, then if you lifted your back thigh, lower your knee down just for one breath, take your arms up, hook your thumbs and lift. Exhale, hands to the floor. Again, keeping your back toes curled under. I know you think I can't see you because this is recorded and you're in your own home, but I know if you just untucked your toes. Take your hips, pubic bone, sit bones, whatever, all of the above, reach them back a little bit. Fire up your left quads. Inhale, re-bend your left knee. Place your palms. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, now please come to a plank pose. Lower down to the floor. Roll over onto your right hand side. I'm not mirroring you now. And prop yourself up onto your right forearm. Make sure that your right elbow is not underneath your shoulder. Make sure it is in front of your shoulder. Okay. Now stack your legs. I call this Marilyn Monroe pose. <laughs> then first make sure you're not sitting into the shoulder. So push your bottom forearm down. Take your upper arm bone, roll it back. Then use your shoulder blade tip, pull your bottom chest forward and up. Now here's the hardest part of, I think, of what we're focusing on today. Can you pull the bottom chest up without letting your arm bone come with you? So keep the arm bone back, chest comes up. Then step the top foot on the floor, lift up, side forearm plank. Now don't stack your feet yet. Try again to pull the bottom side of your chest forward and up keeping your bottom arm bone back. Now, if you wish, stack your feet, side forearm plank, awful. Just awful. Actually, it's really good. <laughs> okay, come on out. Now, just so I can make sure that I still see you, for me on my left side, I'm just gonna kinda casually move to the left. Again, make sure your elbow in front of your shoulder, not underneath it, also not way out here. Let's call it an inch or two in front of your bottom arm bone. Okay, before you lift your hips, arm bone back, shoulder blade tip pulls the chest up, then hips up, top arm up. Try again, can you bring the bottom waves, the bottom chest up, keeping your bottom arm bone back? If you did on the first side, stack your feet. 
and come on out. Roll back onto your bellies. <laughs> graceful, right? Oh, what a graceful yoga teacher. Inhale, come on up and do a little cobra for a moment. And then exhale, please stretch back. Downward facing dog pose. Okay, from downward dog, track your right leg up into the sky behind you. Exhale, swing your right shin forward to pigeon pose. Okay, now in this pigeon, so I don't talk about this placement too often because I just don't see it happening very often, but um, particularly for today, a lot of the times people come to pigeon and have their front thigh pointing straight forward. Uh, I don't recommend this, um, but particularly for today, make sure your right knee and right thigh is angled outward as opposed to coming straight forward. Now keep your back toes tucked under, straighten your back knee for a moment, wiggle your left foot back a little, oh, and then put your left knee back down. Move your ribs in ever so slightly now as you come a little more vertical. Bend your back knee, reach back, hold your left foot with your left hand, and draw your left foot in with any grip of the hand on the foot that you know how. I'm taking Bekasana grip. I've covered that in, in details in other videos. Not super important for today. However you're holding the foot though, keep taking the left hip, thigh, ribs more towards the front of your mat. Then release, place your palms, tuck your back toes under and then swing your right leg up. Lift your left heel, bend your right knee and turn your hips open to the right for fire hydrant dog. And release your right leg back down. Switch sides, take your left leg into the skysies. Exhale, swing your left shin forward. Again, particularly for today, making sure that your left thigh is angled outward, roughly 45 degrees. Curl your back toes under. Straighten your back knee. Wiggle the foot back a little bit. A little bit goes a very long way here. Keep squeezing along the inner thigh as you wiggle the foot back, the back inner thigh. Lower your knee down. And then as you come up more vertical, take your ribs slightly back. Bend your back knee. Reach back, grab your foot. Same thing, as you draw the foot in, take the whole right half of your body, bring it more forward. Keep your head pointing forward. I've noticed a lot of the times, I'll say bring your, bring your right half of your body forward and people will turn their head only. Right, and, the, and your brain tricks you that way. It says, oh, my head turned, so the rest of my body turned. Well, you turn from the area that has the most lateral rotation right now, which is your neck. Turn the hips, the spine, the waist. And then release, place your hands back down, and step back, downward facing dog pose. All right, so now from here, I'd like you to come down and watch for a moment. So we're gonna do side plank, and I know a lot of you at home have done side plank many times. So I'm gonna give something for those of you to do who are new to side plank, something for those of you to do who have been practicing it for a long time, which is why I want everyone to stop and watch. I'm going to take off my shirt so that you can see my shoulder. So those of you who are newer to side plank, your main focus is you'll stack the feet, keep the hips up, and your main focus will just be taking your bottom arm bone and rolling it back and keeping this part of the arm bone back and the shoulder blade strong into the spine as you take your top arm up. Okay. Those of you who have been practicing side plank many years, you're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be intensified by this action. So watch, I come into side plank, hips stay lifted. Now watch, I'm gonna bend my bottom elbow just a little bit. Then I swing the inner elbow this way, in. And as I swing the inner elbow in, look at my shoulder blade it pulls into the chest more. So when I swing the elbow in, then the elbow starts to point more back towards my feet, and I can turn my chest up, arm up, bottom arm bone stays back, and then come out. So again, if you are new to side plank, do not do that. It will be horrible on your body, on your shoulder, all right? So let's do it all together now. Come into a downward facing dog. 
Spread your fingers nice and wide. Come halfway to plank. So unlike what you've probably heard, your shoulders are not directly over your wrists in side plank. That is a bad idea. So come onto your right wrist, your right hand. Your shoulder should be a little bit behind your right wrist. Take your left arm up. Stage one, hips up, roll your bottom shoulder back. Do not try to bend your right elbow. Stage two, bend your right elbow a little bit. Swing the elbow in, and then pull the back of the right shoulder blade tip, push it up into your chest, and turn your chest more up, like you are going into a little back bend. Ah, oh, inhale and release. Whew. Boy, that's hard. And then we'll do the second side. Again, side plank on your left hand. Keep the shoulder behind your wrist. Right arm up to the sky. Hips stay up. Breathe. Stage two, bend the left elbow. Swing the inner elbow in, upper arm back, shoulder blade tip up, and turn your chest. And then you can either come out, do a vinyasa, or a child's pose. Ah. All right. Then, wherever you are, just come to sitting on your heels. If sitting on your heels isn't accessible for you, you can stand on your knees. Give your wrists a little shake. Do a couple of wrist circles. So this thing that we're doing, right? Inner elbow forward, upper arm bone back, shoulder blade tip up, all of those have to work in conjunction with each other. I'm not just moving my elbow back and forth. I'm not just rolling my arm bone, and I'm not just working the shoulder blade. And hopefully it was super clear how they all kind of work together to extend the chest in your side plank. Come back into a downward facing dog for a few breaths. Mm. You know what I just realized? We forgot the three-legged dog on the left side, didn't we? Shoot. Don't worry, we'll get there. All right, from that poor dog, take your right leg into the air, swing your right chin forward, because we get to do pigeon again. Now this time, start by curling your back toes, straighten your back knee, and wiggle it back a little bit like before. Now, lower your left forearm down, twist your right arm up to the sky, reach back and hold your left foot for a twisted pigeon thigh stretch. Make sure your bottom elbow is forward enough that it's not just kind of like, I see a lot of people ending up here in this pose. That's just awful. Ooh. <sighs> Inhale and release. Step back. Down we're facing down. <clears throat> Second side. Bring your left shin forward. Oh. Curl your back toes under. Straighten your back knee. Wiggle it back just a little bit. Then this time, come down onto your right forearm. Elbow a little in front of your shoulder, and then oh, twist. Oh, I love this. I love this pose. And then reach back, grab your foot. You can't grab your foot. I should have said this on the first side. This is more than sufficient to get a, a really great extension through the pose without grabbing the foot. Breathe. All right, release. Now step back, three-legged dog. Ah, I knew we'd get there. <laughs> left leg up, lift your right heel, and then stack your left hip on top of your right. Fire hydrant dog, just for a moment. And then release. All right, you guys, we've got two to three more things to do. Now I want you to grab your strap. This is currently some of my favorite shoulder work. It's a little bit complex, so I'm gonna teach it facing away from you so that it's easiest to follow. So what you'll do is you're going to sit in Dandasana with your legs forward. Okay, let's do this together. So now I'm gonna take the strap, make sure that you can see me, perfect. I'm gonna take the strap in my hands like this on the right hand side. Now, you're gonna put the strap in between your pointer and thumb with your palm on the floor. And it doesn't matter for this one which way your palm is pointing. I'm going to turn my palm straight back. Oh, here, I'm going to scooch forward so that you can really make sure that you can see. Now from here, I'm going to take my left arm and I'm going to pull the arm up 
and I'm going to start to make a big circle with my arm, keeping both arms straight and the strap very tense, meaning there's a lot of tension between both hands. And you're going to make big circles like this, open and close. Keep the arms straight, keep the strap tense the whole time. This should feel really amazing across the back of the chest, front of the chest. And I like to even turn my chest a little extra on each side. And I often get a nice adjustment when I do that. Oh God, okay. And then come on up and we'll do the other side. Take both ends of the strap to the left. You don't feel anything, if nothing's going on, I would guess that either your hands are too far apart or they're not keeping the tension between the hands as you're making the circle. So again, place the left palm down. Takes a moment to find the, light, the right length between the hands, but then once you've found it, oh yeah. Oh, it's like a vacation for you. Oh, did you hear my back crack? Oh. Breathe. Okay. Okay. All right, so now what I'd like you to do is we're gonna go back to this first side. I want you to watch the first round and then join me for the subsequent rounds. So watch this first round. I'm gonna take my hand back. The setup's gonna be the same to begin place the palm. Now, palm back, so middle finger pointing back behind you is most intense. You can turn the palm in a little bit to make it a little bit less intense. And then watch, I bend my left knee, you're watching this first round. And you can let your right foot roll out, so I'm rolling onto the pinky toe side of my right foot. Then watch as I exhale, I press down and lift up, and I make the same circle and come back down. Okay, so now you're kind of coming in and out of wild thing pose a few times. So as you exhale, press down strongly, lift up, make a nice big circle, lean back, stretch back, and lower back down. Again, you're keeping the tension the whole time. Keep the tension between the hands. Otherwise, the arms get loosey-goosey. The shoulders get lost. And then you have to really push through your legs. Let's do one more. Squeeze the buttons and the hamstrings. Lift your hips up and come on down. That is hard work, but hopefully you're feeling a lot of nice juiciness in your back. Okay. I know this is a very wrist intense class. You're doing great. Take as many breaks as you need. You can always just pause, give yourself a break. So left palm down. Now notice, when I take my right foot off to the right, it's wider than my hips. That often gives you more space to press into the legs. Roll the left foot out. I like to be on the outer edge of my left foot like side plank. Some people like to keep the foot flat like chair. I don't, I don't know. It's up to you. Then here we go. Exhale, lift up. Oh, open the arm up wide, lean back, and lower down. We're going to do two or three more. And as you get more comfortable, the circle with the arm can get bigger, almost like you're going to take your right wrist all the way to your right heel. It will never actually touch, but in that direction. Now open up your wild thing pose more. We don't do this pose very often because shit, it's hard. And then come on down. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of a break. Give your wrists a little bit of a shake. Oh, I'm rhyming. That's unintentional. Here we go. Okay, so now watch one more time, which I'm, I'm sure you'll be glad to do because it's, it's beneficial for most of us to rest between these wrist intensive, these shoulder intensive things. Last wrist, shoulder intensive thing for most of us. So now let's take together all of the things that we've done and put them into the pose. So my favorite way to come into wild thing is kind of the, the probably the most traditional way. And it's because when you take the leg up, so watch, I'm gonna take my leg up and I'm gonna flip. And I like coming in this way because the hips are already high. The higher the hips, the better. So I cross the feet over, 
Lift my hips up. Now watch. Take the bottom arm bone back. Take the shoulder blade tip. The shoulder blade tip has to lift up, but my bottom arm stays back into the spine. And then stretch the arm. Okay? And then come on out. All right. So now I want you to join me. Back to downward dog. Lift your left leg up. Stack your left hip on top of your right. And then slowly step the foot behind you. Push into your legs. Grip your buns. Take your hips all the way up to the sky. Bottom arm back. Shoulder blade pulls up into the chest. And then stretch your arm back. Reach. Exhale, come on out. Right to the other side before you have time to complain. Right leg lifts, stack your hips. Boom, hips up, bottom arm back, shoulder blade tip into the chest, and then stretch your arm. You can even lean back like you were holding onto the strap and then go back like you were gonna take your right fingertips all the way to the floor. Exhale, come out. Child's pose or vinyasa. Ah. All right, do a couple, uh, come to sitting on your heels, standing on your knees, do a couple wrist stretches, whichever you like. We've done a lot of various unique wrist stretches and videos over the years, so <laughs> I like to just kind of move around a little bit, do a lot of arm balance work. All right, you guys, that's really hard work that we just did. Lie down on your backs, almost finished. Once you're on your back, bend your knees, place your feet to the floor, and then just drop your knees side to side a few times. Take a little windshield wiper twist. Oh, feels good to be on the ground. All right. So now I'm going to give one more option for a full back bend. If your um, wrists and your shoulders are just really, really tired and shot, I would just do bridge pose, okay? So let's all lift our hips up, interlace your fingers, tuck the upper arms in. Hopefully you feel a lot of freedom there. Then if you feel like you've got a little more oomph, place your hands by your ears, push up, one full back bend. Whichever pose you're in, come down nice and slow. Then grab your strap. Slide your strap around your right foot. Stretch your right leg up. Left leg down. You survived. Mm. Now please bend your left knee. Listen carefully. Push your left foot into the floor. Scoot your butt a few inches to your right. Re-straighten your left leg. Now take your right leg all the way to your left for a twist. Turn your head, upper back, and ribs to your right. Inhale, take your right leg back up, still on the right side. Bring your hips back to center. Now, separate the ends of the strap if they haven't already. Exhale. Use your abdominals, your abdominal abdominals to lift your head and chest up. Round your back. And then slowly release your right leg back down. Switch sides. Strap around your left foot. Left leg up to the sky. Keep your right thigh pressing downward. Breathe. Bend your right knee. Again, little scooch of your hips to the left. This is important to keep the spine lined up when you twist. Take your left leg to your right. Oh. And then twist your upper body to your left. Now take your left leg back up to the sky place. Again, separate the ends of the strap. And then don't think so much about pulling your leg in. I want you to just more use your abdominals. Lift your head and chest up. 
release. Let's do one more twist for good measure. Take your strap, gently place it off to the side, or throw it angrily. <laughs> Bend your knees, put your feet on the ground, and then scoot your hips a little to your right, pick your legs up, cross your right knee over your left knee. I, you know, some people can hook their right toes behind their calf for full eagle legs. I just, my body can't do that. I don't have the right length, but it's fine. So eagle leg twist over to the left. Again, really focus on getting your upper back, head, neck to twist to your right. That'll counter a lot of that really deep upper back work we did. Inhale, come back to center. Again, first shift your hips center, then left, then left knee over your right knee. Then if you have really long legs or long femurs or something, or I don't know, skinny leg, I don't know how it works. You can do the double cross and then twist. Inhale, come back. Let's open up the happy baby pose just for a moment. Rock just gently side to side, lightly. Nothing too extreme here. And please join your knees and chins together. Wrap your arms around the front of your legs. Lift your head and shoulders off the ground. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold it here. And then exhale. Release. Stretch your arms out, stretch your legs out, take a full inhale through your nose. Ah. Shavasana. And you just take a nice full breath in through your nose. And exhale. <sighs> Bend your knees lightly one at a time. Stretch your arms, roll to your side. And then please press up. As always, thank you guys so much for spending 53 minutes doing yoga with me. I hope your shoulders feel really great. I promise the next few videos won't be shoulders. We've been on shoulder kick. Please, 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 if you enjoyed this, consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed, liking the video below, and sending it, my channel or video, to a friend who you think might like this wacky, wacky shoulder yoga work. Namaste, everyone. See you next time.